Good afternoon, everyone. Today is Monday, February the 14th. Excuse me if I'm doing a lot of blinking today. My eyes are not functioning like they should. But I'll try to do my best. It is uh, 12.59. Okay, we're going to start off with the sound saying. Coming from 2 Chronicles 7.14b. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And our land really needs a healing. Um, our land really needs rest. That's what the land needs, rest. Whenever the land starts not producing as much as it normally does, or when it starts producing that which is abnormal, um, when it starts just cracking open like an egg, when our mountain sides just start crumbling, in huge, humongous chunks of a mountain falling, when our waters are at unrest. There's just so much going on with the earth itself and with the occupants of the earth. There's just chaos. Oh, oh. straight chaos. All right. Um. And our, our land is, 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 is tired. The land does get tired. When you use the land continuously and continuously and continuously for years and years and years and years and centuries and never allow the land to rest, this is where we are today. Okay? And we need our land to rest. And... If we don't follow the rules of God and allow it to rest every seven years, then we're going to have bad crops. We're going to have major issues. Okay? And not only is the land, uh, the waterways are also fishermen who have been fishing all their lives. Their parents were fishermen. Their great-grandparents were fishermen. Now they fish in the same waters and there are no fish to be found. None. They fish all day and catch nothing. Not because they are not using the same technique as their fathers and grandfathers. It's simply because the waterways are depleted. You have commercial ships that are taking an abundance every day, seven days a week. For years and years and years and now, it's difficult to find fish because you don't allow the waterways to replenish itself. You cannot fish every day in commercial. This didn't, this didn't start happening until commercial fishing came to pass. As long as it was just small fishermen fishing, the water was full with fish. As soon as the commercial businesses started coming in and depleting our waterways now, the little fisherman can't find any fish. And then you have people dumping things into the waterways, dead bodies. And this is not just people dumping dead bodies that they have um killed and tossed it into the river. But these are places like India that instead of burying their dead ones, they put a pregnant woman in their supposed to be sacred waters. So when you look upon their waters, you see trash, debris, pregnant women, dead flowing in the water that's supposed to be holy. There's all kind of monstrosity happening in our world today. All kinds. 
All right, the back is coming from Psalms 119, 165. Great peace have they which love thy law, yes, Father, and nothing shall offend them. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Yes. We who love the laws of God have great peace. We may not be at peace with what's going on in our world. But when it comes to the wrath of God, we are at peace. Not concerned at all. That's why we pray all the time. Because you never know what God will do. And we want to make sure we covered our loved ones. So that's why that consistent prayer without ceasing it's more important today than ever. All right. Um, I'm going to be reading Psalms 10 today. Oh, God. Not only is my eyes bothering me, Father. Okay. Not your problem. <laughs> Let's get started. I want to give you a little bit from my notes. I'm having trouble deciding which one to grab. Okay. Let's go with this one. Yeah, let's do this one here. It's the yellow one. We have a yellow and a red one that we're flip-flopping through. Show pit. Show pit. What's a show pit? It can be spelled two ways. S-H-O-P-H-E-T or S-H-O-F-E-T. Show pit. What is that? It is... In Hebrew, it means judge. Okay? And this word shofet was translated into an English as judge. In Hebrew, it means judge. Okay? In English, it, it is judge. And it is closer in meaning to ruler than judge. Judge means judge. Shofit means judge slash ruler. That's why before uh, the Israelites had a king, they had a shofit, which was a judge slash ruler. But no, they decided they wanted to have a king like everybody else. Okay? So shofit is closer in meaning to a ruler, a kind of military leader, or deliverer from potential or actual defeat. That's what Samuel was. Okay. Um, that's what Moses was. Okay. <coughs> um, it is a non-royal ruler also. Properly a magistrate or a ruler rather than one who judges in a sense of trying a case. Uh, a sofet was a, a more like a military leader, a prophetic leader, but of non-royal descent. All right? Um, Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is living and active, like yeast is living and active. All right? It is sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. Why? Because it is powerful. It is not empty. It is not void. This is why it is living. This is why it can behave in various ways. Sometimes it can behave like a sword, a double-edged sword. Sometimes it behaves as a hammer. Sometimes it behaves like a light. It changes form. Isn't that magnificent? Whereas your words and my words are just words. God's words are living words, like water, a 
okay? So this is why it can turn into various things. It depends on what it's behaving like, okay? So it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirits, joint and marrow, just like a sword. When you use a sword against a person, it penetrates through the skin, down to the bones, to the marrow. Why? Because it is sharp. So it's going to cut. And so is the word of God. It is sharp. And it too will cut like that sword. Or it behaves like a hammer. It will destroy. What will it destroy? All that is not true. Okay. So it is living. It's alive. Having life. It breathes water. These are things that have life. Water has life. You have life in you. Okay. The word of God has life in it. Like the life that's within thee. Or the life that's within water. All right. This is the power of the word of God. That's why it must be used. That's why it's good for correction. For redirecting. For rebucking. For teaching. All right. Jeremiah 29, 23, 29. It is not my word, it is not my word like a fire, said the Lord, and like a hammer that breaketh the rock in pieces. Okay, it can behave like various things. The word of God. It is extremely powerful. And it must be used. Okay, alienate, cause someone to feel isolated or estranged. Okay, sometimes, depending on what you have done, people will alienate themselves from you. If Samuel can walk away from someone he loves so much, he loves Saul. But Saul's behavior caused him to alienate himself from Saul. So it's okay to do that. It depends on the action of the individual. You're not to feel guilty for doing it either. It is God ordained. Never somebody alienates themselves from you. It is God ordained. You better believe it. Okay, whether it's Samuel walking away from Saul or your mama and your daddy walking away from you for whatever you have done. Some actions today that children do cause the parents to alienate themselves from you. If you attempt to attack them or hurt them, cause them any harm. If they have sense, they will alienate themselves from you. There's not that much love in the world. All right, turn away, start to move away or to face in a different direction. God can do the same thing. He could turn our, his back on us and let us wallow in our wickedness. wrong today father oh that I have to do this because if I don't I won't know what I gave you all right let's do another page set apart separate something and keep it for a special purpose okay the people of God are always set apart. He always push you to the side. 
Sometimes he takes you and he grinds and peels and 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 shaves. That grind and peeling and shaving comes through life experiences. It is training camp time. It is not pleasant. It don't feel good. And sometimes you might think God has abandoned thee or forgotten thee. It is all part of your training. In the same sense that when Joseph was tossed into the well by his brothers, that was the beginning of his training. It was harsh, it was mean, but it was training day. And it lasted for 17 years. Okay? So whenever you go through hardship, don't always look at it as some kind of punishment. Sometimes it's a preparation. All right? All right. Jeremiah 1 5, I know you before I formed you in your mother's womb, before you were born, I set you apart and appointed you as my prophet to the nation. Okay, and sometimes disappointment happens in the womb, as in with Christ and John the Baptist, as in with Samuel. And sometimes it happens sometime during your lifetime, as in with Joseph, Moses, and all the others. Okay? Isaiah 43, 1, Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Anything that belongs to God cannot be Obtained by the devil. Let me repeat that. Anything that belongs to God, the devil cannot come near it. The devil cannot make it worship him. Why? Because it belongs to God. Okay? This is why when Jesus went up to the mountain, you think the devil didn't try hard? To get him to worship him, he offered him the world. But anything that belongs to God, the devil cannot have. And that, that doesn't just apply to Jesus, but that applies to all his servants and saints, period. That is a die heart servant of the Lord God Almighty. And it doesn't matter whether you come to them as a tender fruit or as a grown person. They will still reject thee all the time. Period. We are never lost in, 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 in any stage of our lives. We are never lost. Never. Fear not for I have redeemed you. I have Called you by name. You are mine. 43.2 When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulties, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. This is the blessing of those set apart by God. Period. Let me repeat that because that sounded good. It says, fear not for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. That means that name you have, it was a name given to you by God. So I can't change Brenda to Brandon. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. 
when you go through the river of difficulties, in which you will in life, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you at all. Daniel 3.27 says, And the princes, governors, and captains, and the kings, Counselors being gathered together saw these men upon white bodies whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was the hair of their heads singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. These were the three servants of God that went into the furnace that mesmerized the king. And that's how God does it. Can nobody blow your mind like God? No one. Okay? And he's done it in the biblical time. And he does it today. Alright? Let's take this off. Let me at least get through the reading father. Alright. We might only be able to do half of this because <laughs> I got a quite few issues going on today. All right, let's get through it. This is going to be six, 18 verses. Let's see if we can munch on all 18. Psalms 10, no title at all. Why, O oh Lord, do you stand far off? Why do you hide yourself in times of trouble? In his arrogance, the wicked man hunts down the weak who are caught in the scheme of his devices. And these schemes are so huge today, Father. Everybody is scheming. Nobody schemes more than the government and the politician and leaders of this world. He boasts of the cravings of his heart. He blesses the greedy and revives the Lord. In his pride, the wicked does not seek him, does not seek God at all. In all his thoughts, there is no room for God. None. Just more wickedness. More evil. His ways are always pre preposterous. He is hefty and your laws are far from him. He snares at all his enemies. He says to himself, nothing will shake me. I will always be happy, happy and never have trouble. His mouth is full of curses and lies and threats. Trouble and evil are under his tongue. He lies in wait near the villages. From ambush he murders the innocent, watching in secret for his victims. He lies in wait like a lion in cover. He lies in wait to catch the helpless. He catches the helpless and drags them off in his net. His victims are crushed. They collapse. They fall under his strength. He says to himself, God has forgotten. He covers his face and never sees. Arise, Lord, lift up your hand, O God. Do not forget the helpless, Father God. Why does the wicked man revive God? Why does he say to himself, he won't call me to account? <laughs> and the wickedness of this world today, this is exactly what they think. They will not be punished for the things they are doing. Why you, O oh God, do see trouble and grief? You consider it to take it in hand. The victims commit himself to you. You are the helper of the fatherless. Break the arms of the wicked and evil men. Call him to account for his wickedness. Amen. That would not be found out. The king, the Lord is king forever and ever. The nations will perish from his land. You 
O oh Lord, the desire of the afflicted. You encourage them and you listen to their cries, defending the fatherless and the oppressed, in order that man who is of the earth may terrified no more. And we got through all 18 verses. <laughs> Thank you, Father. I can't share my troubles with you, but uh, enough to keep me from hanging on too long this morning. I thank you for listening. God bless you for listening. He blesses you even more if you just find your Bible, open it up. Don't worry about where to start. Just open the book up. The Lord will have a page for you. Start there. There's always a message there for you, especially for you. If there was a hundred people lined up and they all had Bibles and they opened their Bibles, everyone would open up a Bible and a page would be designated for them. Okay, so wherever the book opens, begin there. For God knows what you need. He will always give you what you need. But if you don't go to the source of your strength and power, how are you to obtain strength, Father God? How are you to keep your protection over yourself and your family, Father God? How are you to keep evil from coming near unto thee? You must keep your strength up. In the same way you provide for your body so that it may be strong and healthy, you have to also feed your spirit. Okay? Because the spirit of a man is more important than the body itself. Without that spirit within you, the body is useless. It simply falls. Why? Because it has no spirit in it. It is the spirit that gives it a voice. It makes it move. Without that spirit, it is useless. This is why you must feed it. It does not take the same nourishment. As your body does. It needs something stronger than food. And the word of God. Is much stronger than food. Thank you very much for listening to us here at Spiritual Water. My name is Brenda Guerrero. And as always, may the peace of God be upon you. May the protection of God surround you. And may the will of God for this earth be manifested. I wanted to touch base on something. I, I, I tend to listen to my brothers and sisters on YouTube. And there are times I hear things that is incorrect. Okay. And I meant to speak on it today, but if I live and nothing happened, I will certainly address it tomorrow. I don't want any of my listeners to be confused or misled by any of this false good going around. All right? So stay tuned. Join me tomorrow. And I'll give you the truth. Have a wonderful day. Be kind. Be grateful. Be thankful. And above all, be loving. Have a good day. I love you. God loves you more. Talk to you tomorrow. If I'm around.